What's up guys? This is uh, three days out on Easter. So these were inoculated 4-9 and you can see this couple of these pink oysters are really taking off. Um, this one is a little slow, the Black Pearl King Spore, but I can see some grains right, right here starting to take off. But pretty fast growth after three days. What's up guys? So it's six days after inoculation of uh, these pink oyster and you can see the black pearl king is uh, kind of lagging behind. It does have some growth right here but it's just moving a lot slower. Um, but if you look at this hybridized black pearl king with the pink oyster, you can see it's uh, really moving along as well as a couple of these other pink oyster strains and then this is my king oyster here just for reference so typically it takes about you know 10 to 12 days for my oyster mushrooms to fully colonize and these uh, these are going pretty quickly so I'm very excited and I actually have a few of the chestnuts and the piapini that I'm going to be inoculating today as well so here's my spawn rack and I've got one of the piapinis that are fully colonized and um, the chestnuts and then uh, some lion's mane as well that I'm doing for my production but um, I'll be inoculating some of those today and then um, I'll put those into fruiting as soon as they fully colonize as well. Once again here's all the uh, the crosses so this is a PDJ BB2C8 this is the hybrid um, you can see how quickly it's moving and then pink oyster pink oyster that's my uh, king oyster and you can see that it's starting to jump off from these grains here pink oyster another pink pink oyster and then this is the black pearl cross with itself you can see it's starting to take off from some of these grains so six days in all right guys so one thing I wanted to go over kind of quickly is the care of the mycelium after it's inoculated into the bulk substrate bags so after you inoculate it and put it um, into colonization it's really important to monitor the growth um, because contaminants can quickly take over and um, you don't want that to happen because it could cause you know contamination outbreaks in your grow so constant surveillance is important one of my favorite things is these uh, laser thermometers so you can see um, the temperature of a healthy mycelium bag and it's running you know 72 up to 76 or 77 76 8 so these are all normal temperatures but one key um, you can look for for signs of contamination are um, right but one key um, factor in looking for contamination is temperature so you can see the difference between these bags here you know 75 and 80 79 if you come over here 80 degrees which is not very normal you can feel it it's warm to the touch and another giveaway is when i smell this bag um i can it has an off-putting odor to it so this is from the same batch it's a king oyster but i believe that it's a yeast contamination that's forming in this bag it kind of smells almost like a fowl like uh, something fermenting which makes sense and you can see um, there's no growth at the bottom here so I assume that this bag is contaminated so I always just pull them um, just as a precaution and this bag is um, not as warm but it was right next to this one in the incubation so 
I'm also going to be suspect of this bag because it was probably right after. Um, I inoculated the previous one and sometimes um, the skin from your hand can slough off and cause a yeast outbreak um, and that stunts the growth. Um, you can see it's starting to struggle here. So I'll just set these two bags off to the side and um, I'll probably compost them in the garden just because I don't want a yeast, um, a yeast to proliferate in my bag and it's kind of, you know, it causes uh, stress on the mycelium and um, it can really, you know, degrade the, the quality of the mushroom. Alright guys, so that being said, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate what contamination might look like um, if you come across it in grain spawn. So this is a grain spawn bag from that King Oyster, the same one, um, same strain. So it looks like there might be some kind of uh, yeast contamination here as well. Um, or it might be bacterial, but the dead giveaway is that the growth kind of stopped and um, it inhibited the mycelium and you can see this greasy exudate which is building up um, and that's uh, pretty typical for a uh, bacterial contamination so I'm going to compost all of this and then if you look at this jar culture here um, there's some penicillium started at the top and you can see how affected this mycelium was as well um, it never really got that rigorous uh, white look to it so unfortunately um, this is contaminated as well but um, I'll go ahead and take it outside and put it in the compost and be more wary of the upcoming weeks um, usually in the springtime is when contamination could start to rise because organisms like um, this looks like a penicillium but penicillium and trichoderma as the temperatures outside are warming up, they become more apparent and you just have to do extra cleaning at this time and lots of quality control. All right guys, so thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll keep you updated on those bags as they go into fruiting and hopefully we get some really cool looking mushrooms and tasty mushrooms in the near future. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any more mycology videos um, or anything on this breeding project. And um, I really appreciate all the comments. So comment if you have anything else um, that you want to say. And I look forward to the next video. So um, much love, guys.